Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I'm once again answering some of your questions like, would I ever wear this brand? And will I ever be buying another Rolex? All that and more in today's episode. Now, of course, before we get started, customer wristwatch check. Today, I'm wearing something I haven't worn on camera before. It is my Casio G-Shock. I'm actually leaving the office after filming this video and I'm heading to the gun range to shoot with a few buddies and this is what I wear um, on on the occasion I do that. Absolutely love it, enjoy wearing it a lot and I wear it more than you might think, um, though obviously very, very casual and you guys might be surprised, but G-Shocks are awesome. And also guys, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. A bunch of cool watches have come in, including a Rolex Deep Sea, full box, full papers, great condition, and of course, the least expensive one in the country. We also got in the extremely rare Zin EZM9, tegmented, one of the toughest diver style tool watches ever made. If you guys want a real purpose-built tool, go check out the Sin EZM9. And last but not least, my personal, from my personal collection, Gerard Perigo Laureato in Rose Gold. Absolutely love this watch. Uh, it's quite the statement piece. I've owned it for three or four years, but I'm trying to fund the Grail watch, which... That video will come out soon, so this one has to go, but it was in my personal collection. Fantastic piece, and now on DelrayWatch.com. Anyway, guys, DelrayWatch.com, the best place for a watch geek to buy a watch. Link in the description below. Guys, these are the questions you asked me on my Instagram account, at Federico Talks Watches, a few times a month. A Q&A picture comes up. When I get enough pic uh, questions, I take the picture down. Please do not DM me. I do not check them. And we start in no particular order with John.Pan. Hey, Fed, have you ever owned a Jacob & Co. watch? And if not, would you like to? Hey, John, no, I never have. And I never, ever will. I just know too much about Jacob & Co. Uh, let's forget about his personal run-ins with the law. But he's made some of the biggest pieces of shit, excuse my language, Ever to grace uh, the watch community. I mean, his five time zone piece, which is like the five cheapest quartz movements that always break. I mean, we used to buy them in bulk at 10 cents on the dollar directly from Jacob & Co. when he had money issues. And half of them, the hands would fall off, they'd break. We stopped buying them. Now, yes, they do make some pretty cool masterpieces, uh, like, like very high-end horology, but that's more of their like flagship stuff. I doubt anybody buys it because it's so darn expensive. They mainly gift it to celebrities, but their normal stuff, at least in the past, is absolute garbage. And I'm not willing to uh, to buy anything or wear anything um, that used to have that kind of reputation. Not to mention, and I'm going to get a lot of crap for, for this, because obviously I'm going to make a generalized statement, but most, most, most Jacob & Co. watch wearers are douchebags. There we go. There, I said it. Just my opinion, though. Max Sabatka. Howdy, Fed. Do you think Frank Mueller is currently undervalued in today's market? So, Max, I actually really, really do. But there is a reason for that. And Frank Mueller dug their own grave. For years, they were riding high. They were overcharging $20,000, $30,000 for stainless steel ETA chronographs calling themselves the master of complication when there was an ETA in the watch. Now, yes, they've made some very high-end watches, and yes, I actually like their designs, but years of fleecing the watch community has caused them to basically become irrelevant, and now they're actually very undervalued. Not to say most of their watches aren't still ETA, but, you know, a two, three grand, a Frank Mueller, absolutely a buy, in my opinion. They're not bad, badly made watches. Rad Marco, what is your favorite Alangenzona watch? Well, this to me is simple. I could say some kind of crazy tourbillon or, or the Zeitwerk, but nope. I'm just going to go with the, uh, with the, oh, I forgot the name. How do I forget the name? Sorry, I had a brain fart. The Datagraph. 
I absolutely love the Datagraph in Platinum. Elegant complication. I love the big date. The chronograph is beautiful. And it's one of the most beautiful three-dimensional movements I've ever seen. Yes, the watch is kind of chunky, but that's part of its kind of like Germanic style. Still extremely elegant. A movement with some of the best decoration I've ever seen. One of the smoothest, if not the smoothest chronograph I've ever actuated. The Longa Datagraph is truly a dream watch. Greek Force One, which is the better world timer, Omega World Timer or JLC Polaris Geographic? Both fantastic watches. Omega being new to kind of like the world time thing with the Aquaterra, I think that is fantastic. But I'm going to give the nod to JLC, just a finer watch brand in my opinion. This movement has been tried and tested. It's been out a long time. Even though the Polaris is new, the movement has been used for at least a couple of decades. And for that reason, I would just go with the JLC. Watch and unwind. Would you ever buy another Rolex? I know you gave up on the brand, but could you ever see yourself going back? So interesting kind of question. While I certainly will never buy uh, a Jacob & Co., and that's a definitive answer, uh, I almost, I rarely like to say never. Um, I could see myself buying a Rolex again, um, not anytime soon, uh, certainly not at these prices. They do make fantastic watches, uh, boring watches, but fantastic. Even though there are a couple that I really like, like the Milgauss, the older aluminum bezel Pepsis. I don't see myself going back to Rolex anytime soon, but I'm never going to say never. Anyway, guys, that's it for me today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Really does help. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And of course, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.